Oh boy, grain sales to Soviets is a big event. Maybe the best US event in the game. The Soviet player absolutely needs to be aware of this event and will need to avoid it. We will learn how to make the most of it here on Legendary Tactics. Grain sales to Soviets is a tremendously flexible event. And while it can sometimes be innocuous, it is never bad for the US and it is almost always trouble for the USSR. Let's take a good look at how it should be handled by both players. First of all, the event. Grain sales to Soviets is a two-op US mid-war event card. Playing the card for the event allows the American player to draw a card randomly from the Soviet player's hand and either play it or return it. If the Soviet player has no cards or if the drawn card is returned, the US player can take the two ops provided by the card and may conduct operations normally. Please note that to play the card you choose does not mean you must play it for the event, as some people have thought. It just means play the card as though you had played it from your hand in any normal action round. This includes playing the drawn card on the space race if it meets the requirements. This is an important and often missed aspect of the card. For the Soviet player, this is a card that you must send to the space race. This card is not good for you no matter what the result of the event. People don't normally think of this card as a DEFCON suicide card, but it absolutely can be. Never play this at DEFCON 2. If you trigger the event and the US player uses the operations points provided by the Grain Sales to Soviets card or the card that they draw, a coup in any battleground country will worsen DEFCON to 1. This will cost you the game because the battleground coup happened on your turn, even though it wasn't conducted by you. One would also initially think that you could just hold on to it until the end of the turn when you have no cards left to pull, but don't forget that because with this card the US has the option of taking operations points on your turn, they can do a battleground coup at DEFCON 2 and you have lost the game. So this can work, but you have to be careful. The event also has the negative effect of potentially reducing your hand size, which can make your hand management problematic. For this and other reasons, it is always a good idea to keep the China card around, just for these sorts of contingencies, as it gives you a bit of wiggle room to manage your circumstances. Salt negotiations can be especially helpful in getting rid of this card from your hand, either by increasing DEFCON to make grain sales to Soviets safer to play, or by giving you an extra card in hand so you can hold on to it until a more convenient time. But any card that improves DEFCON can be of use, like How I Learned to Stop Worrying, Nuclear Test Ban, or maybe Summit if you feel lucky. Space it if you can, hold it if you must, but if you must play it, play it very carefully at DEFCON 3 or above. For the US player, rejoice if this card comes to hand. It is arguably the best overall US event in the game. It is extremely flexible, especially as a headline. It can give you operations points to use, even in the headline phase. It doesn't leave the game, as it is not a starred event. It reduces the hand size of the Soviet player. It is a DEFCON suicide card for the USSR. And there's really nothing you can do to inadvertently mess it up. If the USSR gets it, it is an unplayable card they will have to work around. Red Scare Purge can make this impossible to send to space, so if you have a suspicion that the USSR might have it in hand, say in turn 7 when the reshuffle happens, a headline of Red Scare Purge would be perfectly timed to mess with the Soviets' glorious plans. And if you get it in hand, it is one of the best headlines out there. If the timing isn't right for you to headline it, you may want to consider hanging on to it to headline next turn. The main question is, when you take the card from the Soviet hand, do you always play it? Do you ever return it? In general, you want to play it. The reduction in the hand size of the USSR potentially makes the entire turn a nightmare for them. If you can somehow pair it with a five-year plan event, even better. Not to mention the fact that if it is a favorable event of yours, or best of all, if it's a great neutral event, you can take advantage. Even if you draw a tolerable Soviet event, it is likely worth playing the card in some fashion. If you end up taking ops or sometimes the event provided by grain sales to Soviets during the headline, strongly consider doing a coup in a battleground country to take away 
the first action round coup advantage of the USSR. If the event isn't great for you, you're still best to take the operations points provided by the drawn card, even if you simply dump it on the space race. Reducing the Soviet hand size, especially if you hold the China card, is an opportunity too good to pass up. There are some instances when you may want to return the card. The first one that comes to mind is if it is a scoring card for a region that you dominate. In that case, you'd be better off taking off some operations points, unless you feel the Soviets might try to contend there this turn. But if you return it, you still have the benefit of the information provided by the drawn card. If you draw a scoring card from the hand of the USSR in a region where the Soviets are ahead, you'll have to read the board. If you think you can catch up in that area with the cards you have in hand, return it, and take the operations points from grain sales to Soviets, possibly to make headway in that region. Use the information gathered by the card play to your benefit. If it's a region that is in balance and not worth many victory points to either side, you can possibly play the scoring card after drawing it to dash Soviet plans of gaining ground there before they can score the region. You can also return a card if the event you get isn't great and you can really benefit from taking the two operations points provided by grain sales to Soviets right now. A draw of, say, Kitchen Debates or Summit qualifies as an example here. Or, if you draw a strong, spaceable Soviet event, but you have something in hand that really should be spaced instead this turn, you can feel free to return the card and take the operations points. Sometimes there are cards you want to leave in the Soviet hand to give them a hand management headache, like Panama Canal Returned, OAS Founded, or Sadat Expels Soviets. Remember that what makes these cards especially painful is that the USSR can't generally send them to space. Or sometimes you just feel you need the two ops provided by grain sales to Soviets instead of the one op provided by the card that you drew. No matter what, you will be happy to see this card in hand. There really is little downside, so take advantage of the flexibility this card offers you. In summary, for the USSR, this card is pretty much unplayable. Send it to space if you can, or hold on to it until a later turn, when you can then send it to space. And for the US, this is arguably your best event in the deck. Its flexibility means that you can benefit from it in many different ways. Use it well, use it wisely, and enjoy it. This has been our analysis of the Grain Sales to Soviets card in Twilight Struggle. We hope you got some value out of this video, and if you did, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time here on Legendary Tactics.